Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, the Management and Leadership Distinction. This is Lecture B, Temporary Leadership. In this lecture, we are going to be talking about some of the opportunities and challenges of leading healthcare IT projects. In addition, we will explore various types of organizational structures. And finally, we will look at temporary leadership challenges. The objectives for this unit, the Management and Leadership Distinction, are to compare and contrast concepts of leadership and management. Describe the concept and importance of developing followership. Discuss challenges of leading in a hybrid HIT organization. Define and discuss the Project Management Institute's three types of organizations. Discuss the pros and cons of temporary leadership. It is important to understand that in the healthcare IT environment, an organization could have multiple IT projects going on simultaneously. These projects could include server replacements, software upgrades, or a new system implementation. This is a complex environment in which to manage and gives us ample leadership challenges. It also leads to temporary managers being appointed for selected projects. For instance, a functional manager may run the billing department and all the resources in that department, but a temporary project manager may be hired to manage a software upgrade project in the billing department. This presents challenges for employees of the department. They'll want to know the answer to questions such as, who has authority for managing the changes that will take place as a result of this software upgrade? Or, how will the knowledge transfer take place from the project manager to the billing department staff? The project manager is ultimately responsible for the outcome of the project, but the functional manager owns the resources, human and otherwise, that must be committed in order for the project to be successful. When we encounter organizations that are both managing regular operations, the current state of the organization, and planning the future state, that is, they are in the middle of a project that will change current operations, we call this a hybrid environment. This may mean that a department manager is working alongside a consultant or vendor who is implementing a new system. The Project Management Institute, or PMI, is an organization that sets standards for managing projects. PMI defines three types of structures for organization. These types of organizational structures are functional, projectized, and matrixed, and all of these types of organizations would be considered in a hybrid state when they are in the midst of new projects. Let's explore these types of organizations. The most common organization type is a functional organizational structure. In a functional organizational structure, the department manager is responsible for the project outcome as well as for managing the various teams on that project. A project manager may be named, but that person typically has low influence or power. One positive aspect of a functional environment is that there is deeper company expertise related to the functions. People have in-depth knowledge of processes, and there are also well-defined career paths for individuals. In a functional environment, employees are hired as permanent departmental resources with very specific expertise, not as temporary project resources. A drawback of a functional environment is that the project manager is at the mercy of the functional manager for obtaining project resources or dealing with poor performance of a project team member. A project manager may be given a significant project to implement, but he or she is really dependent on the functional manager to accomplish most of the project's goals. In a projectized organizational structure, the organization is structured according to projects, not functional departments. 
The project manager is responsible for the project and the people who work on it. An example of a projectized organization is NASA. NASA has multiple teams working on various projects with the same end goal in mind, say, to build a new shuttle, rocket, or telescope. In the projectized organization, the project manager is in charge. A benefit of this structure is that the project manager has complete authority. Often, loyalty among team members is high due to having common goals. The project manager has the full attention of his or her project resources, and the resources don't have to split their time between normal operational duties and the project tasks. The negative aspects include team members being out of work or otherwise in jeopardy when the project they're working on is completed. Likewise, if the project is a two- or three-year-long commitment, the resources tend to get rusty in their skill sets and are often pigeonholed when they look for their next job upon project completion. In a matrixed organizational structure, the project resources, that is, the people working on the project, have a departmental or functional manager and also report to a project manager. The leadership or authority in the matrixed organization is shared between the project manager and the functional manager. There are three sorts of matrix structures, weak, strong, and balanced. Let's clarify what is meant by a strong, weak, and balanced matrix. In a strong matrix, the project manager has all the power. This may be illustrated through a construction site manager. This manager manages all the subcontractors, all the inventory, and ultimately is responsible for the end result, that is, the building being built to specifications. In a weak matrix structure, someone may be called a project manager, but he or she has little or no authority or power. In reality, this type of manager is more of a part-time coordinator on a project. A weak matrix often indicates that an organization is not far down the path on managing projects, according to the Project Management Institute's model. A balanced matrix may come into play in a product development effort at a software company. Think about Google and how it's run by software engineers. If a company is constantly trying to improve products, it will need some of the engineers to manage the existing state and some of them to manage the project that will transition to the future state. Here, both parties have a vested interest in the outcome of the project, that is, the new product's development. The positive aspects of a matrixed organization include having the best of both worlds. Since project managers are embedded within a department, they tend to get more in-depth experience. Whereas, if they were on loan to that department, they may be coming into a project blindly. The negative aspects are higher costs because of duplication between the functional and project managers. Likewise, there is a possibility for more conflict between project and functional managers because of authority issues. HIT implementation managers could walk into any one of these environments. Therefore, it's good to get an early sense of how the organization operates. Your personal or company project management style or methods may not be a one-size-fits-all. As a general rule, people employed at a healthcare organization tend to be loyal to that organization and their functional manager. So remember, the functional manager should be your best friend. Understand the functional manager's needs and frustrations, and she will probably be more likely to work with you on issues that arise. Finally, the saying in project management consulting is that you are only as good as your last project. This can be a feast or famine industry. So, if you are seeking to develop your leadership skills through project management, be sure to always take the high road 
and maintain ties with all the organizations that you've worked with. A few words about temporary leadership. Large and even small-scale IT implementations may have several teams from several companies who usually come in to perform temporary tasks. For instance, an inpatient hospital may have contracted the services of a hardware company for the servers, a software integration team to link the interfaces to various systems, project managers to manage the schedule, budget, risks, and development work, and account managers from the vendor company to ensure contracts are carried out according to plan. All of these teams are scalable depending on how large the implementation is, but it's not unusual at a large hospital to have between 20 to 60 external resources on a project team at once. Even in small office practices, there are often multiple teams operating at the same time. Further complicating matters is the potential for the vendor to have more than one project going on at a time. Many development team leaders will be committed to several projects at once in different locations and may be on the site one week but gone the next, only to return again in two weeks. So much about being successful in healthcare IT is learning how to listen, which, some would argue, is more than half the job in communicating. Listening to what end users or stakeholders really need and figuring out how to help them is an enormously valuable skill. Finding a technological solution is not the end-all, be-all cure. Really listening to what end users need is essential. Even more important, is the implementation manager's ability to hone in on his or her emotional intelligence skills. These are discussed at length in another topic in this unit. Department managers may feel they're being spread too thin, trying to manage the current operations of the organization while also trying to plan for the future environment. Project resources will feel stretched and may not know if they should be loyal to the project manager or their department manager. This can create a stressful environment, and the temporary leader will need good emotional intelligence, which includes listening skills and the ability to act calmly in a stressful environment. There are good and bad things about temporary leadership. On the positive side, your time at an organization may be temporary, especially if you are an implementation manager for a vendor or other outside entity. You may be in an organization that does not value the EMR implementation or the education that's being provided. The interactions with a temporary leader and the permanent staff are not always positive, and you should understand this is not personal. It's more likely that there has been a steady stream of temporary managers or workers in the organization. Some have been hatchet people. They are there to assess the landscape and make recommendations that will save the healthcare organization money, and that might mean cutting staff. Some people will lump you into this category and not buy into the project you're leading. This is to be expected at times. Just remember, your leadership is temporary. You will leave the organization and move on to your next job. While you are cycling in and out of different organizations, you'll see that there is typically a pattern or blueprint to how the organization operates. If you have been on several implementations in a row, you'll be able to pick up on cues more quickly and probably have a quicker read on the temperature of an organization. There are also drawbacks to being a temporary leader in an organization. As stated previously, you may be in and out of an organization pretty quickly, we know that trust takes a while to build. It may never fully develop. Likewise, you may be coming into an organization with more skill sets or product knowledge than the permanent staff, and there might not be enough time for adequate knowledge transfer. Ideally, knowledge transfer should happen as part of a quality management piece of the project plan. But this doesn't always happen. Finally, Recognize that not everyone in the organization welcomes change in the same way, 
and temporary leadership may create some unrest. Temporary leadership of a project is a difficult task, for you may only be in the organization long enough to create a lot of change and then leave without ever seeing the true fruits of your labor. If you can, try to stay in touch with the resources from each project you're involved in. This concludes the management and leadership distinction. In summary, recognizing that temporary leadership comes with its own advantages and disadvantages, there are three items that an implementation manager should keep in mind. It's common for information technology to risk getting separated from the business it's supporting. We should try to focus not just on the technology, but what the business is trying to accomplish with the technology. This means really listening to the needs of the end users and key stakeholders. You may be in an organization to implement a product or service, but it won't be a success unless you've really sought to understand the context in which it will operate in the new environment. Second, take the time to get to know the people around you. A CIO in Boston once said that if you as the leader are not giving something of yourself to the people who are on your team, the trust will never fully develop. Take advantage of hallway and elevator conversations to approach the person as a person, not just as a project resource. Instead of asking how their tasks are coming along, ask how their weekend went instead. Project status can be updated at meetings. The alignment with the clinical organization is very important. As a temporary leader, your task will be to go into an organization, implement a product or service, or consult on a strategy, and then you will leave. The clinicians of the organization, however, will be left with your product, service, or recommendation. So, it's best to understand as fully as you can what their wants and needs are before you begin to make any changes.